Chapter 2, Section 2, Question 1, Type 1 of 2. From Chapter 1, Section 4, we were doing almost the exact same thing in Chapter 1. So we're going to evaluate, which means to do the problem. The following formulas for the given values, we're going to use order of operations, and of course fractions, decimals, and percents are fair game. Notice the formula has an A equals. We need to keep the A equals on the left hand side of each line working down the page. A equals P. Our P number is $4,000. While we are working on the math, we actually don't have to have the dollar sign plus P again times. Now, this is a decimal, or this is a percent, and we need to make it into a decimal. The way we change a percent into a decimal is we divide by two zeros, meaning divide by 100, which will move this over two places to the left. We're going to plug in this number. And then multiply it by the t, which is the 3.5 years. As we continue, we're going to get 4,000 plus, we're going to take perhaps our calculator and multiply 4,000 times 0 0.0521 times 3.5, and we'll get 729.4, and then add those together and get 4729.4. This formula here is for simple interest. A is the accumulated amount of money. P is your principal, your starting amount of money. R is your rate, the percentage that you're increasing. T is your time, the number of years that you're putting your money in for an investment. And so over the course of three and a half years, at 5.21% interest, your $4,000 will grow to be $4,729.40. Now, notice how I said that. To get this as an answer, we want $4,729.40. Remember here in the US, we have two decimals here because we have pennies, which are worth 100 pennies to a dollar, so we have a hundredths place. Chapter 2, Section 2, Question 1, Type 2 of 2. Again, just like in Chapter 1, Section 4, we're going to take an equation and we're going to plug into it and simplify it, evaluate, and just do the problem. So, some of you may recognize this as part of the quadratic equation, which we will cover more in Chapter 8. So it starts off with x equals negative b. Normally it's plus or minus square root, but this is only the negative part. B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. That is our formula. We're going to plug in negative. We're going to plug in a B number. We're going to plug in a B number. We're going to plug in an A number. We're going to plug in a C number, extending those vinculums. And then we're going to plug in an A number. Now, plugging in is very important in this class and in most college classes. So you'll notice that even though B is negative 5, and many students know that negative negative 5 is going to be positive 5. I want to know, can you plug it in and have negative negative 5? Many students know that negative 5 squared is 25. I want to know, can you plug it in? Can you plug in that A is equal to 2, that C is equal to negative 3, and that A is equal to 2? This is the plug step. And if you cannot do this, I will take off some points. So please make sure that you can do this and that you show me that work. Here, negative, negative 5, our multiplication step says negative times negative gives you a positive 5. This is a group, and we can do that that's exponents first, 25. Multiplication here is negative and negative makes that positive. 25 plus 8 times 3 is 24. 25 plus 24 is 49. I can make that vinculum shorter. And 2 times 2 is 4. But we're not done yet. We can do 
The square root of 49 is 7. And 5 minus 7 is negative 2 over 4, but wait, there's more. I can reduce that and get x equals negative 1 half, which is our final answer. If you stopped here, I would actually still take off some half credit just because you forgot to reduce. Chapter 2, Section 2, Question 2. We are solving for y. We have been solving for x this entire time, and we are going to start changing it up on you. You're going to find that this is going to happen from here on out. So we're starting off with 2x minus 3y equals 6. We're trying to isolate the y's now because we're solving it for y. So my 2x term has to go to the other side. Descending order by degree. I could write 6 minus 2x, but I would rather that you wrote negative 2x plus 6 because I'm preparing you for chapter 3 when we'll have to solve for y in order to create a problem in slope-intercept form for graphing. Then we're going to divide everything by negative 3. And while you could divide the entire side by negative 3, also to prepare you for chapter 3, I want you to divide each individual term by negative 3. And then we get y equals negative and negative is positive 2 thirds. The x can go afterwards on the top in the numerator, afterwards in the center, but it should not be on the denominator. That would be wrong. Positive and negative gives you negative, and 6 divided by 3 is 2. This is how we're going to be doing it in chapter 3. So if you start learning it here in chapter 2, that would be better. This is slope-intercept form, which we will be using in chapter 3 to graph an equation. Chapter 2, section 2, question 3. We have to solve this equation for y, and you'll notice there are fractions on both sides, just like in previous section in chapter 2. We want to find the lowest common denominator, which in this case is 6. So I want to multiply to make this 6. I want to multiply top and bottom by 2. Remember that this is the multiplicative identity from chapter 1. We're multiplying it by 1. Here, we're going to multiply top and bottom by 3. Now that we have common denominators and an equal sign, pew pew, they're gone. 2 times 1 is 2 times x plus 2y. And 3 times 1 is 3 times 3x minus 4. We're going to use the distributive property from chapter 1. Now, we need to isolate the y. So the x term has to move to the other side. And then, again, we want to divide by 4. While you could divide the left-hand side by 4 and the entire right-hand side by 4, I'd really like you to start dividing each individual term by 4. That's going to prepare you better for chapter 3 that is coming up sooner than you would like. The x can go in the numerator or it can go afterwards, but it should not be in the denominator at this time. 12 divided by 4 is 3, and we have solved it for y. This is in slope-intercept form. I'm going to erase that because it makes it look a little bit like an X. Chapter 2, Section 2, Question 4. Solve for the indicated variable. We had you solving for X. Then we had you solving for Y. Now we're having you solve for W. We have fractions again. Our common denominator is 3. This entire side, because I can extend this vinculum out, they're all being multiplied. This has a denominator of 3. And we need to make sure that the other side has a denominator of 3. So we're going to multiply it by our really messy 1, which is 3 divided by 3. This makes it a legal move because of the multiplicative identity from chapter 1. We have an equal sign and common denominators. The reason I'm showing it to you in this matter is I'm preparing you for chapter 6, where this is going to be the way we solve pretty much everything. All right, equal signs, common denominators, pew pew, 3 times v is 3v. Multiplying by 1, the multiplicative identity says we don't need that 1 there anymore because we have length times width times height. Many students think that this is a 1, so they make this one go away as well. This is 1 over 3, 1 third times length times width times height. 
That's actually the volume formula for a rectangular prism. So some students will make this L into a cursive L times width times height. And we're solving for W. To get rid of a times by L, we divide by L. But we're not just timesing by L. We're times about L and H. So we want to divide by both L and H. All that will cancel out, and we'll get W is equal to 3B divided by L times H. If you have a teacher who wants the single variable on the left-hand side, that would be a wonderful time to split that up, to switch that around. Chapter 2, Section 2, Question 5, Type 1 of 2, right, and use a formula. So, we have a picture here of a shelf. So, this is looking at it straight on the front. We have the left side, the right side, and we have all the shelves here. Mary is making a shelf sketch to the right. She has 12 feet of wood. If the height is 3 feet, so if this is 3 feet, find the width of the shelf. We don't know the width of the shelf, but we could call it x. x is our favorite variable, yay. So some people will say x plus 3 equals 12, and that's not enough, because this is a shelf of length x. 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 The left-hand side has a height of 3, and you, of course, need a right-hand side of length 3. You could write the equation as x plus x plus x plus x plus 3 plus 3 equals 12. That is perfectly fine. Or you could combine like terms and have 1, 2, 3, 4x plus 3 on the left plus 3 on the right gives you 6 equals 12. And we're going to solve our algebra equation by showing work on both sides, which is very important. I am OK with 3 over 2. However, if it makes more sense to you, 3 divided by 2 gives you 1.5. And that might make a lot more sense on the width of the shelf is 1 and a half feet. I will take either answer. So if you want to do 3 over 2 feet or 1.5 feet, one of the college professors thinks that the 1.5 feet makes a lot more sense. So I'll do that one. Chapter 2, Section 2, Question 5, Type 2 of 2. This problem is here because we previously had a question on simple interest. This is compound interest, and this is how money actually works. So the compound interest formula is much more complex than the simple interest formula because that was simple. This is complex. All right, so compound interest formula. A is the accumulated money, that is your after money words. And then this is the P, the principal amount of money that you start off investing. One, this is why before we had two terms. The first one was P all by itself, and then the second one was the principal times rate times time. So this is your original money plus the rate that you're investing it as. It does have to be as a decimal. The number of times a year that they give you your interest. The number of times a year that they give you your interest again. And T is the time in years. If this rate is given in years, then this time is given in years. In the event that you're doing something for science and they give you the rate in a percent per minute, then the time would be in minutes because those would have to agree. Again, we have A equals, so we want our A equals to line up beautifully on the left-hand side. P, our P number is 10,000. Someone is investing $10,000, go them. And then one plus the rate as a decimal, they have 3%. Remember that we have to divide it by two zeros. A decimal point that's not in sight is always, always on the right. And then you move it over two places because we're dividing it by two zeros. And so we will get 0 0.03. N, the number of times. It's composited monthly. How many months are in a year? 12 months are in a year. N is 12. Now, something to think about, if it was compounded quarterly, four quarters in a dollar, there's four quarters in a year, like in our school year. If it was daily, there are 365 days in a year. If it was weekly, that would be 52 weeks in a year. N is here as well, so the 12 goes here as well. 
and then times the t, and it is at the end of four years. Some of our calculators can handle putting in this right-hand side, but what I'd really like for you to do is to multiply those two exponent numbers because that is the most common. So our work on this, we're going to leave this here, and we're just going to do 12 times 4 is 48. Now, pretty much everyone's calculator can handle this. What you're going to do is only type in the right-hand side. You're going to type in 10,000, parentheses, 1 plus. If you have the fraction to make it top and bottom, go for it. Otherwise, 0 0.03 divided by 12. And then there's a caret button. It's on the right-hand side. It just looks like the caret from English. And that says up in the corner. Some of you, it will push you up into the corner. Some of you, it will leave it like that. And then you type in 48 and you hit enter. So we grab our calculator and we do what Ms. Jordan just said. 10,000 parentheses, 1 plus alpha y equals enter to get 0 0.03 on the numerator, 12 on the denominator, and parentheses raised to the 48th power. And we get A equals 11273.28021. But we want to know how much money will we have at the end of this? That does not look like money. So it says we want to round it correctly to our pennies. So if you had $10,000 and you were able to get 3% interest, compounded monthly for four years. At the end of those four years, your $10,000 would become $11,273.28.